Welcome to The Writer's Dream. This is a show where authors get a chance to talk about their books, how they write them and publish them, and also market them. And also we talk sometimes to people who support authors. Uh, we're on Facebook, we're on YouTube. Uh, obviously, you search for The Writer's Dream. If you have a question for me or you would like to be on the show, please message me through The Writer's Dream Facebook. Today's guest is Steve Vaccaro. He is the, an innovator and host and producer of Chapter Wrap, a radio show which supports authors. Steve actually gives authors a chance to talk about their books. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Steve. Well, Linda, thank you so very much for having me on your show. It's, it's a, a pleasure. Ple it's, a, it's a pleasure to work with you and to know all the outstanding work that you do for authors. And the, the, the nature of the show, is, it's called The Chapter's Wrap. And I'm um, actually a psychologist, clinician by trade. So my thoughts back a couple years back were to advocate for not just people with disabilities or people that are creative, but specifically for authors. And it was important for me to connect with them because of the work that they do over the years, but also where, and to, to work together with them at how they can market their book and to promote their creative thoughts. Now, did you start with uh, authors who wrote particular kinds of books or just in general? Well, you know, as a clinician, I, I, I always um, interacted with um, clinicians and psychologists and social workers and administrators with mental health or educational purposes. So in the first um, couple of years of the show were geared towards authors that um, discussed or wrote about different areas of concern within the community or the school system. From there, I branched out to discuss other authors and to kind of support other authors in their work outside of that. So basically, your radio show started centering around your profession, your, your profession in psychology. And then as things progressed, then you just branched out because you show now you have a someone who talks about sports, mm -hmm. you always have a musical guest, right. um, and then you have an author and you do um, fundraising. Right, right. So it's, it's really um, a packed show. Right. But tell me, how did you get into radio? Well, actually, I always loved talk radio when I was younger, and I always would listen to um, baseball games late at night coming from different um, cities. So I was, had the little transistor radio under my pillow. My grandma was, my mother would say, um, turn, that sleep, off. turn that <laughs> off or you can't watch TV. So I had my little transistor under my pillow and I would listen. But it wasn't just sports, it was people talking and interacting. So I always thought that was such a, a great way to communicate and not just to help one person at a time, but to help a lot of people at the time. So I really stayed away from it. I got into doing, you know, my clinical work and went to school and, and, and became a, a psychologist working in, in New York and then moving to Maryland to work at Johns Hopkins Hospital and came back to New York. But uh, the focus was always to, you know, communicate with people that were um, interested in advocating for themselves. So it did start off working with um, people with disabilities and my passion that's the word chapters, because I believe that all of us have um, chapters in our lives. I mean, when we're younger, like a stage theory, it's like you're younger or your 20s and 30s and 40s. So chapters, that's where it really came out to. And, and rap is talking, like we're doing right now. So chapters rap, talking about different stages in your life. So it naturally came into talking about authors. Um, about a year and a half ago, I was asked to do uh, a presentation to a bunch of authors at a Barnes & Noble. And I was wondering why they would want me to talk to these authors, because I'm a radio guy. And um, mm -hmm. <laughs> so then, then I said, then I thought about it, and I said, OK, that sounds great. So they had like 30 or 40 authors there during this presentation. And immediately, I realized that we have so much in common, because here I am communicating with people, masses of people through the radio show. And here are these talented authors communicating through their books and their creative mind. So we really connected. After that presentation, um, a lot of the authors came up to me and we were talking about how we can work together to promote each other. So that was like the origin. And I realized a whole new world out there working with authors. And it's been a great pleasure and a privilege to do that. And so many of the authors um, that I've had on this show and that I've met on your show write books about personal journeys, right. chapters right, in their lives. Right. And um, this is something that 
could dovetail very nicely with what you do uh, with psychology. But what was, how did you find the radio stations? Where well, did they I, find you? Well, what happened was in Baltimore, I was on a um, ABC uh, Family Advisory Board. I was working at Johns Hopkins, and they asked me to create um, an advisory board and working with the community and different people. So I got, that's when I got the bug to be with media and, and TV or radio. So from there, when I moved back to New York, I was looking for different possibilities to kind of branch out that little bug that I caught in Baltimore. And I found a show, a local show. I looked for it. Um, and it was in the, in, the, in the lobby of the Long Island Railroad. It was a posting. And they said they needed commentaries and different things. So I'll respond to it. Wow. And I responded to it. They, they took me in. And uh, it started. <laughs> and, I, and then I got the, the bug, really. But then my time on this radio show was kind of limiting. And I didn't have, as a psychologist, you can't really do things in five minutes on the radio. No. Um, so from there, I began to have different thoughts of how in the future I could progress from there. And this was WGBB? WGBB 1240, yeah. And right. So there was a show. And during the storm a couple of years back, this particular show had struggles um, with it and because it was based in Long Beach. And the show, but after the storm, a lot of the, the musicians and the, and the um, commentaries, uh, commentators um, had difficulty with the show because Long Beach was hit hard because of the storm. Yes. So from there, we started to do fundraising outside of Long Beach to support the show and people in Long Beach so we can give back to the community to get them back on their feet. It was soon after that, though, my time was limited on that show. So I was at Crossroads when that happened. Yeah. Yeah, let me, I, let me take a minute just to say that Steve's show is on WGBB 1240 on Saturdays, 3 to 4, and also on ycradio.org. This is on the internet. This yes. is not on the radio. This is, it's internet hopefully radio. soon will be on the radio. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and that is, uh, so it's WC Radio, I'm sorry, YC Radio, it's York College. Right. ycradio.org, and that's 4 to 5 on a Tuesday, yes. 4 p.m. to yes, 5 yes, on a yes. Tuesday. And, and then how, how that came to be um, was I had a guest from your college um, last year, and it was a dean of psychology, and she, on the show, we feature live musicians, mm -hmm. we feature um, youth heroes, so we acknowledge um, somebody young that can come and, and talk about their experiences, but the differences they want to make in the world or, or already have made in the world. So we acknowledge that on every show. Well, this particular individual was on the show uh, and liked the show very much. After the show, she said, can you bring this to your college because we want to have this for the, stu for the students. And I said, sure. So after that, maybe two months after the, um, her interview on, the, on, on Chapters Wrap, we started uh, in November at ycradio.org, which is the voice of today's generation. And uh, we've blossomed through that. And currently, we're in the process of simulcasting um, with other CUNY schools. And we're talking about FM. And of course, this is a, a wide audience. I mean, you really have two radio stations that give you a pretty wide audience. Yes, yes. YC Radio focuses on academia, a lot of the mm -hmm. students. And it's very diverse. The, the studio is located in Jamaica, right outside Jamaica Penn, uh, Station, train station. So it's very diverse. I think that area of New York is the mo most diverse area. In, in the country. In the country. Every language in the world is spoken in Queens. OK. <laughs> All right. And it was a natural fit because our slogan is where unity and diversity meet one chapter at a time. So it was a natural fit. And, and from that moment on, November, we've been excited to have so many talented guests, mm -hmm. authors included, um, musicians, professional athletes, politicians. You yourself were on the show. Yep. And you, and you've been a big part of it. So it, it's been a great journey. Well, I, what fascinates me, though, is you always have a, uh, a call-in guest. And the call-in guest is always some um, fundraiser or charitable organization. And you know, I, I guess I never thought about it too much. But Long Island does so much fundraising yes. for so many different causes. Uh, I guess it's because there is a fairly a percentage of the population anywhere is fairly accurate right. uh, affluent and they do that so how do you go about getting I mean you do this every week how do you go about getting somebody as that call-in fundraiser guest right. or organizational guest every week well it's funny because when I first started it was scrounging around to get people to come on the radio <laughs> please come on please, <laughs> that's please. how this show was <laughs> and, but now it's inundated with different causes and different advocacy efforts because what I do 
it's not a job, it's not a hobby. I believe it's a calling what I do, and mm -hmm. I feel like it pushes me, it motivates me, like yourself, it motivates you to advocate for others. So when being a clinician, I've had contact with different agencies. One that I always work with is Long Island Cares, which is a food mm -hmm. pantry. So every fundraiser event that we have, we do a canned food drive. And you're doing one August 27th? August 27th, we're Rockville doing a canned Center. food drive in Rockville Center, a bookstore called Turn on the Corkscrew. Uh, it's actually our third anniversary event for the show. And we're having live musicians, and we're having authors, having tables, and it's a, a, a book fair for a lot of the authors and celebrating the local authors of Long Island and, and the tri-state area. Um, so, um, what was I going to say now? Just went right out of my head. Um, <laughs> when when you do the show, you always have a musical guest as well. Yes. How does that work? dealing with the musical guests and the author. Is, do you ever find connections or do you find that? I know I was on one show where the musical guest actually inspired the authors, the author to uh, to speak about what they did. Right, so right. have you ever given thought to choosing a musical guest and an author that might play off of one another? Well, we do that frequently. Like we had an author that wrote a book about the Holocaust um, and, and the journey, his journey in the Holocaust. So we carefully picked out a musician that would support that journey and the music was, you know, kind of supportive of that era and what the words he was saying to describe his his experience. So yes, we carefully pick out the musicians to go along with the authors that are on the show. But the author, I mean, the musicians that come on the show are young, talented musicians. Some of them have been on American Idol. Some have been um, are trying to get their um, music out there professionally, and some have been accomplished musicians for the years over the years. So they're in tune to. It's a unique dynamic. It's a good question. A unique dynamic that goes on between authors and musicians on a show, because you could see the wheels turning on both. And after the show, right? And, and after the show, we're often talking for like 45 minutes and connecting and how we can do how we can work collaboratively together you know, in the future. Well, networking is probably one of the most important aspects of, of marketing, yes. whether you're marketing music or, or a radio show or a book. And uh, it is amazing to me when I meet authors who I don't know, um, which is often, mm -hmm. um, how many tips I get from them and then I am able to also give them. If this show, for instance, is a marketing platform right. for them. They are able to put their show on YouTube and, and see it on Cablevision and, and see it here, of course. And and that's you have to get your message out. Right. You know, you can't just write a book or write a song and then bury it, so, you know, right. play it to yourself or right, read right. it yourself. You have to, marketing is the most important. How do you market your, your show? Well, it's interesting. Well, social media, I've become, I'm becoming a little bit better with social media over the years. And um, so social media, Facebook, um, which is a chapters wrap with Steve Vaccaro Facebook page. Anybody out there could, you know, check us out there. So that social media is a big thing. Um, and through the radio itself and, and promotional. Every show that we do, we have a promotional flyer that we send out to all our contacts. So people are aware of when the show is. We're doing Twitter. Mm -hmm. We're doing live Facebook now with um, Periscope. So we're trying creative ways to get our name out there. We've simulcasted some shows back to Florida. We've had listeners due to the web. We've had listeners internationally. So they're... Um, those folks are getting the word out as well. So yeah, a couple of the couple of times I was on your show, the call-in person was not from New York; they right. were from other states. And I'm sure that that person is telling everybody, "Hey, listen to this show, or watch, or listen, watch it on um, exactly on, on and the web." Exactly, and, and the authors too, if they have connections outside of New York, they're interested in bringing it to the show because those connections can be connected on the show. Yeah, I know the way that I do it is that I advertise it on my Facebook page. Whenever, whenever I appear on any TV or radio show, I advertise it on my Facebook page and then I put it in my newsletter. Right. And if you don't do that, you're wasting right. such an opportunity. Exactly. And um, your work is not only just to promote those people, but you're promoting uh, fundraisers and you're pr promoting good causes like uh, Long Island Cares. Right. And uh, what were the other organizations that uh, are it, your favorites? Uh, Chrissy's Wish, which is a mental health agency which deals with suicide prevention, and they've been around for 10 years. And the ownership there has um, um, unfortunately experienced suicide in a, in a, in a, in a way, personal yeah. way. So they've gone beyond that, that their 
difficulty with that to help others with brain research. So that's another favorite of mine, uh, the Lions Club, which we work with um, exclusively. But also, a lot of different agencies might come to our Salvation Army or different agencies that really need our, our assistance to get the word out. So I'm always looking out for those advocates out there mm -hmm. that want to take it to the step further. And with authors, too. Like you said, authors, they can write a book and, and sit back and say, you know, come to me, but it doesn't happen that way. Yeah. You have to promote it. Mm -hmm. And those authors that come on, that they're, they're looking, taking the extra step, it inspires me to see what they're doing. So it, it, collaborative efforts have been easy to, to formulate. Well, that, that's, uh, that's how you do it. You do it through the, all this networking. Now, what, what I'm interested in, because I went through this process, when you first started the show, when you're the producer of a show, you have to figure out a format. Yes. And that's not the easiest thing in the world, because you, you think, oh, yes, well, I'll have a guest on and we'll just talk. But it doesn't, it doesn't come that easily. Right. How did your show evolve? What was, the f what was your first show like? <laughs> yeah, I know. The first show. <laughs> well, you know what? The one at the very beginning, we use a song. I have a jingle. You know, you can listen to the jingle after every show, before every show. Did you we, write the jingle? I didn't write it. Someone else, uh, a musician from Rockville Center, G, uh, Gina Naomi Baez, wrote the jingle for the Chapters Rapper, which is really great. Um, but they also I connected the song Love Train by the OJs, the old Motown Oh, I song. remember the Love Train. So we start, I look at it, and Love Train is what connecting people, like jumping aboard this love train. And with so much negativity in this world right mm. now, that song means more than ever to me, And even though you know it's timeless. So to have everybody come together. So the first shows kind of evolved. I always want to acknowledge youth, because that's who I work with. I work yes. in the school system. So acknowledging God knows youth. they need it. Yes. And I'm not a musician either. So, but to, to, And I've, I've worked with a lot of musicians. Mm -hmm. And to have live music, it's almost, I always model the show after like a late night show, like you know, not like David Letterman or something, but uh, something like that, because we have comedy, we have a little, always have a serious um, discussion, but also like Dick Cavett, bringing people on. I always admired Johnny Carson. I always admired those folks that could bring different people together in an hour, an hour and a half. Yes, and, and you have somebody who does sports. Yes. He's very good. Uh, I don't follow sports. I don't follow professional sports. It's just not me. <laughs> I'm too busy with other stuff. <laughs> and I was actually sitting listening to him and, and I, I, I found him to be interesting. Uh, and then what I really found interesting uh, was right after um, Muhammad Ali died, mm -hmm. I was blown away by how much everybody knew about Muhammad Ali. Right, right. And that sparked a discussion. So right. every segment of your show sparks a discussion. Did, did you have all those elements in the first show, or did you pick them up? No, you know, I'm a big on. sports fan, and I have, because I'm a clinician, I've stayed away from talking about sports on the radio because I can get carried away and talk the whole show on sports. But I, ha I carefully stayed away from it, so I'm always looking for a person that could do sports so I can do what I need to do with the other area. Mm -hmm. And Chris Campbell, you're referring to, yeah. is excellent. He's, yeah. been, he's been on the show since the beginning. He actually set up the Facebook page, and he... He has a way of describing sports that anybody can understand. He breaks it <laughs> down, <laughs> the specifics of it, and he's also empowering. So anybody on the on the panel that day can talk about. And, and the, the 